Hello everyone, thank you for joining us this evening. I, I know it might take a, a moment or two whilst you joy through the wonders of Zoom. Um, we, we've got William Plumtree with us uh, this evening, who is going to answer some of our questions and let us into the insight behind his work that currently features in one of our November exhibitions, A Very English Tradition. Um, it is open in the gallery at the moment and it continues until the 25th of November. We are open by appointment, so you can get in touch with the gallery and book an appointment to see the show uh, in, in, in the flesh. But we've worked really hard to bring these events to you for everyone who is at home and obviously further afield who can't come to the gallery. Uh, here we are. So thank you, William, for, for joining us. Um, down in Cumbria this evening, uh, this kind of dark, we've, we've had mist rolling in in Edinburgh the last couple of days. So I hope it's been a little, little clearer with you. Um, but we're going to look um, through William's exhibition. Here, here's a little image here of one view of the show within the gallery. And you can see that William has created this, these beautiful um, pieces, different scale, different forms, um, a, a kind of stuck very true to a, to a colour palette um, that is dominant in, in William's work. And we'll find out a little bit more about the, the technique um, and the, the, the forms uh, in his work as we, we go through this evening. So there's a little image for you there. And here's a couple of details where you can see the pieces up close. And again, the, the, the differences, the variances in the technique here. And, and William, what I was going to, to ask you is there's a, there's a real Japanese influence to your work. That, that is the ethos but behind your work. You've got these beautiful forms and these techniques that are only you know, from Japan. Um, you left art school, um, Chelsea Art School in 1983, and you actually lived for two years in Japan and you've returned uh, numerous times since. And you say that it has massively influenced your work. You learned specific techniques. That was what draw, drew you to Japan in the, in the first place with that, that, that notion of, of learning and absorbing these techniques. Can you explain a, a little bit more about your links with Japan and how it's affected your, your work that we see here? Firstly, thank you. Um, and firstly, I would like to say what a lovely exhibition you put on. It really looks fantastic. And welcome to everybody who's tuned in tonight. Thank you so much for coming, uh, albeit virtually. But the show does really look, um, really looks beautiful and beautifully lit and well set out and each in its own space, so to speak. Um, yeah, it all started really in, in the library at... Uh, Chelsea Art School because I, I started reading about Bernard Leach. Bernard Leach uh, went to Japan in um, 19, uh, oh, 19, whenever, 20, uh, earlier than that, 1912, I think. Um, he went to Mashiko, a small pottery town, and he met Shoji Hamada. And I started reading about um, Mashiko, and I read quite a lot about Mashiko and Hamada. And after Chelsea, which was mostly a, a technical course, I realized that I didn't know how to throw pots as such. I tried to get a job in uh, England and I f it was a difficult time. It was, uh, people weren't taking on sort of full-time apprentices. And in 1985, after about 18 months, I got a single ticket and I went out to Japan. I got on a train and I had a large suitcase and I landed in Mashiko on the first week in March 1985 on a cold, clear night. And the next day I uh, went about finding to get, get a job. Um, I had no, uh, I had one contact from um, Takashi Yasuda and she was going to solve my entire life problems. Um, the only problem was that she couldn't speak any English and I certainly couldn't speak Japanese. But we, we, I, I rang her up and uh, I introduced myself and, uh, and she picked me up and she literally just dumped me outside a pottery and said, go in there and ask for a job. And I did. And um, 
I got a job for six months. That's how it started. I mean, I, I literally got shown in, 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 into a wheel and I got shown where the clay was. And I said I wanted to throw and the potter said, yes, you can throw. And he had an Australian student there. And um, he said, you can, you know, you, you, you can do what you want, but you will, in the daytime, when, 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 when you're working here from eight to five, I want you to make a teacup. And I sat there and I made the teacup for six months. And that's how it started. Um, after that, I went, uh, I, I'd, uh, after about, well, actually, no, not after six months, but after about three days on a Japanese kick wheel, my left knee was so sore from kicking. It's a kick wheel. And they tried to they'd see the Japanese throw. We throw in the West anti-clockwise, the Japanese throw clockwise. But I didn't do that. I went anti-clockwise. But even so, kicking this lower flywheel to a top flywheel was very, it's very, very hard work. And I had a lot of pain. But we came through the pain and we went on for going through the pain for the next two years. And I, I learned to throw with him all over again, I, right, right from the start. And I was grateful for that. But after six months, I, I left him and I went and worked for a kiln builder. And I built kilns for six months all over Mashiko, repaired kilns, built kilns, uh, two big ones we did, um, a, a porcelain kiln, I remember it, in the hottest, hottest August. It was so hot, we used to start work at six o'clock and finish at two. And during this time, I went into a gallery where there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of pottery galleries in Mashiko. And I saw these pots, which had a, a diagonal pattern on them. And I got close to them, they were behind glass and I got close to them. And the pots were made by a man called Tatsuzo Shimoka. And I started making inquiries and my boss said, well, that's who they are. And I said, I want to go and work there. And he said, well, that was an impossibility. Um, and then a week later, I said, no, no, really, I, I do want to go and work there. And he said, look, if you want to go there, he said, well, we'll do it properly. And I said, OK, what do I do? He said, you get on the train and you go down to Tokyo, go down to your embassy. And you go and see the top man down there and they write a letter and they introduce you to Mr. Shimoka. And then they will send him a letter and they will introduce you and you. So that's what I did. I went down to the British Embassy. I rang up the, uh, uh, the uh, British Council. And they said, welcome me in. They said, oh, yes. They said, we know Mr. Shimoka. Everybody knows Mr. Shimoka. And two weeks later, the telephone rang in the pottery and my boss looked at me and he started laughing. He said, he wants to see you tonight. So I went up to Mr. Shimoka and he gave me a job for a year. And that was probably the best year. One of the best years of my life. Very a real turning well it uh, sounds like a pun saying a turning point but it was uh that was a, a pivotal moment then when, on your first trip to japan he, to make that connection mr shimoka had two he had one student there already sebastian shied he had another student coming he was 68 at the time he had so much work going on he was working 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 it was full on and, and, and he, he, he looked at me and he, he and he eventually he said, I'm not making this decision. And he called someone in, how many wheels? And he said, right, there's one wheel left. You can go there for one year. And that's what happened. And um, during that time that I was with him, we, he was making that much work that we fired the climbing kiln six times. And after six months, so six times, so that's doing that for March, May, all through the summer and all for his exhibitions. But in the meantime, we would fire gas. And I used to teach English in the evening. So he said, you'll not teach any English in the evening. He said, you can forget all your teaching. 
He said, you'll be here six days, seven days a week. And in the evenings on one night a week, your father Gaskill. And I said, okay, well, did this, I mean, this didn't all happen on the evening in December. This came out when I actually, so I went there on the 2nd of January and he, he said to, to go and sort him out to one of the workers. And they said, have you got a pen knife? I said, yes, they've got a pen knife. He said, right, take him off to the tool maker. And I went off to the tool maker and the tool maker gave me a box of cherry wood. And the, the worker brought me back to the workshop and said, right, cut your tools out of the cherry wood. So you cut your cote, which is the tool for inside the pot, cut your kidney for the, for the doing the bowls, cut this. And I sat there till about the end of the week, shaping these things, which are now sitting in my workshop. Uh, there's one of them, I think, in one of the pictures later. And when I made all my tools, uh, I was given a piece of clay and allowed to throw on the wheel. Finally. It sounds like you made quite an, uh, an impression then, <laughs> if you were being asked to work all this addi these additional hours. Um, and, and the, I mean, the being there obviously had such, made such an impression on you as well. There, there are various techniques that you, absorbed and and you were just enthralled by and they've become synonymous with your work um we can see a few images here of, of you kind of in, in action and some of the, the 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 tools that you that you use but you um you use um wood ash glaze and rope mark uh marking decoration within within your work to give that that um that pattern that texture can you explain a little bit more about those techniques please william mm. Kirsty, just go, go go either back or forward to one of the pots that have um go right here we are so the three pots on the left the tall vase the paddle bottle and the round bowl have rope on them so when these pots are at a leather hard stage the surface of the pot has a rope rolled over it the marks where there's uh, the eyelets where the decoration on the bowl is is marked out with a compass as is on the uh, vase and the, and the paddled vase I, I roll a rope over the surface of the leather hard clay. Um, that then dries a little bit to, 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 until the, the, the pot is, is, is painted onto with blue slip. So the blue slip going onto the pots here, all of them have had blue slip on, have a cobalt kaolin ball clay slip put onto them. It's painted over the whole of the plate, except on the roundels where the decoration is. And that sits there like a hard cheese for as long as two or three days, as long as the weather is wet or, or dry, or if it's too wet, it sits longer, if it's too dry, and then the pot's turned over and the foot ring is turned on it. Once the foot ring is turned on the pot, the top, pot's put back on the workbench and the whole area where the rope has been done on the bowl is scraped with a sharp tool. The surface of the slip comes off and the slip that's in the rope mark stays in the rope mark and that is dried the iron is painted onto the uh, bowl the copper red is painted onto the bowl and it's dried and ready for a biscuit firing so it goes into a biscuit firing comes out of a biscuit firing all that's left to do is put on a clear wood ash glaze which is what is it 30 percent wood ash in that one that's as the standard uh, wood ash, a mixed wood ash that I get out of my wood burner next door. And so your your surroundings and your what you you have to hand and the, the the surroundings that you've created, you know, where you live and work, are fundamental to to your work, really, aren't they? You've you've had to you've you've had to source everything. You've got everything there you need. Um, it's it's kind of it's where you live. It's where you work. They're one and the same. Mm. Uh, y yes, I, 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 could, I, I could do this anywhere, but the fact that I've chosen to do it in the Lake District is it, it does enhance, you know, we, we have a very nice life up here. It rains an awful lot, but that doesn't really matter. I have often thought long and hard about a wood firing kiln in the Lake District. Um, that's the back of our house there. It, 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 it sitting with with a wood kiln, but it, I, I mean it is so wet up here for so many months of the year, 
Uh, we have 74 inches of rain up here and it, we, we struggle to get dry wood on the wood burner. So I've gone for gas. I fire with gas. Um, I haven't fired with wood since I left Japan. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, a long, it's a long process. And I, 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 I chose, I made that decision when I came back from Japan that I would not fire with wood. So that's, that was how I did it. And this is a little glimpse here of your, your studio. That is. So I, I, I like the idea of the, the, the bench is, is Japanese in style. On the left hand side of the bench is my kick wheel. So that has a flywheel at the bottom and a top wheel which has the clay on it and the wheel on the right hand side where there's another square opposite the, the, the right hand window is an electric wheel. I use both of them, but not, I don't use the kick wheel anymore for larger pieces. I use it for, for throwing pots off the hump and I use it infrequently these days. But I, that's, that, that's, that is, in, is the sort of style of a Japanese workshop and that's how all workshops were in Japan with this sort of low low bench with the wheels cut into them. They're open wheels, so you have to throw very clean. So if I sat on the right and the worker in Japan sat on the left, if I put too much water on my clay and started sloshing it all over the bench, he started shouting at me and he would say, no, no, don't do that. And I'd say, what? And he said, no, I don't want any water on this workbench. You have to work clean. And he could work all day in, in, in a suit and tie and you wouldn't know that he'd been at work and he, he he would throw they made you throw incredibly cleanly they were meticulous and every night that we left the workshop every scrap of the workbench had to be wiped down dry well, it does look like you keep your your studio your workshop there in a pretty good condition yourself it <laughs> looks a very um yeah, t tidy place to be, every, every, everything ordered. And it and it's great what you just said there about, you know, you've got the equivalent of a Japanese studio here, a Japanese setup in the, the Cumbrian kind of landscape. Um, the, the two, that, that juxtaposition is is also what we, we have with your work. Um, so we'll, here, here's another couple of images of the, of the finished work. So from the studio to the gallery, um, here are a few snapshots of what you can see um, within the gallery at the moment. Um, but I should say as well that what we, we have is we've been filming the, the gallery so that you can take a virtual tour. So you can actually move um, around William's exhibition and click on the works to see them in further detail. And we know that's not the same as, as coming into the gallery at the moment, but there's so many people unable to, we wanted to bring the gallery to, to you at home. Um, so if you would like to explore the exhibition, you just have to click on William's show on our website and it will allow you to have a, a good explore at all the works there. Um, well, I can't believe it, but we're we're pretty much at the end of our, our event. Thank you so much, William. That's felt like a, a, a real insight into the origins of, of your work, where it comes from um, and rattle through to, to today and, and the show here at, at the gallery. This is um, William's first um, solo exhibition here at the gallery on, on the scale. Um, we have shown his work before, but this is a real joy to have such a fantastic group um, from William. And thank you so much for being a real champ through um, you know, this, this whole time period, because everything, obviously, the rug was pulled out from underneath all our feet um, and you've been wonderful. So thank you. It's a joy to have this in the gallery at the moment. And I hope that everyone else can explore it and enjoy it either in the gallery or virtually. So thank you very much. Thanks, William. Thank you, Kirsty. Thank you. It's been a really, really great experience. And as I say before, it was, it's, a, it's a lovely exhibition and so well set up. Thanks for, for all your time and everything that you've all done. It's been great. Brilliant. Well, thank okay. you very much. And thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. I hope that was a, a little insight for you into the life and work of, of William Plumtree and the show. Thank you. Goodbye.